What's going on Spurs fans? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I got a new mic set up here. I've got a new mic arm. Um, the desk is new. You can't see the desk, but it's brand new. There's still nothing behind me. We'll definitely address that. We'll get some Spurs memorabilia behind me, but we're going to hop back right into some more Josh Primo Summer League film study. We've looked at several aspects of his game, and today we're going to look at the catch and shoot jumper, the off the dribble shooting, and his tough shot making ability. So let's go ahead and roll the film. Something that immediately stood out when watching Primo was just how quick his release was on catch and shoot attempts. From the moment the ball touches his hand to the moment it leaves them on this shot, only eight tenths of a second come off the clock, a number comparable to the likes of Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. Need proof? Here's Klay launching a catch and shoot triple in .72 seconds, a time so quick that John Salmons might as well not have been there. And because Primo can get a shot off so fast, it didn't matter that Macy Oteague was contesting from a few feet away, and it hardly phased the rookie. Primo does several things well in this play. First, he intelligently relocates on the perimeter once he sees Brian Bow in the second, abandon him to make a weak side rotation to cut off a Labissier roll. Then, he displays some excellent shot preparation with his hands out, knees bent, and butt low before Trey Jones makes the pass. And finally, he hops into the catch while the ball is mid-flight, getting his body square with the rim and seamlessly carrying his momentum into a shooting motion and draining the lightly contested trifecta. Josh Primo also showed signs of being a long-range threat in transition, taking four stutter steps to slow himself down before transitioning into a left-right plant and bearing a wide open above the break three. Primo's balance, footwork, shot prep, and off-ball movement combined with a rapid release on his jumper hint at a bright future as a shooter, and most of these elements are highlighted on the sequence as he sneaks into the corner for another catch-and-shoot tray. While Primo showed some off-ball shot versatility as a standstill and movement shooter, his summer league numbers don't exactly tell the same story. The 18-year-old only shot 27.6% from beyond the arc on a little more than 7 three-point attempts per game. But before Spurs fans panic over a four-game sample size, it's worth noting Josh knocked down 38.1% of his more than 100 long-range tries at Alabama a season ago. And considering he dealt with right knee soreness and left calf tightness that kept him out of multiple games between Salt Lake City and Las Vegas, there were certainly extenuating circumstances that probably factored into his inaccuracy. And as we roll the tape, you can see that most of his long distance looks fell well short. That's not all that unexpected for someone adjusting to the NBA three-point line, which is more than one and a half feet further than the college line. And Primo routinely firing away from way outside the arc only upped the degree of difficulty on these attempts, which can explain why they barely made it to the basket or missed the rim altogether. Despite unflattering shooting splits, Primo's confidence never wavered, and I still have plenty of faith in his jumper. Once he gets back into game shape, I wouldn't be shocked if he becomes one of the top marksmen in this rookie class, even if he doesn't see many NBA minutes. Lethal scorers like Damian Lillard, Steph Curry, Kyrie Irving, Bradley Beal, and Zach Levine all have one thing in common, and that's the ability to hit threes off the dribble, a skill Primo exhibited on occasion during Summer League. Watch as the rookie takes the ball down court on this possession, and let's pause. Primo recognizes Scalabissier has taken Xavier Tillman out of the play with the screen and that Desmond Bain is sacking too far off him to reliably contest a three. And as we unpause, Primo gathers into a pull-up jumper, punishing the defense for playing him too loosely. And if he can become more consistent in this area, it can open a world of possibilities for the rest of his offensive repertoire. But for now, that's just a distant dream as Primo has a lot of improvement to do before the pull-up three becomes a legitimate part of his scoring arsenal. While he missed most of his threes off the bounce, let's slow things down to get a better idea of how he generated these looks for himself. Primo patiently dribbles into the Caleb Johnson screen, which ties up Eve Pons, and then swiftly crosses over to his left hand the second he sees Killian Tilly come around the corner with a hard show. This creates an abundance of space for him to get off a pull-up three that just doesn't find its mark. Even though he bricks this attempt as well, let's turn to slow motion again for a closer look. Primo loses Pons on a Baram face screen, and as soon as he sees Tillman in drop coverage and Pons fighting to meet him around the other side, he uses the Faye rescreen and crosses back over to his left hand for another clean pull-up, an encouraging sequence for his future as a pick-and-roll scorer. As we discussed in the previous video, Primo lacks blow-by speed and his handle is still relatively loose at times, both of which show up at the beginning of this play, but it's the late clock that forces him into taking this contested three, not poor shot selection. In fact, there were several instances where the summer 
Spurs turned to Primo for offense when plays broke down. These next two possessions are prime examples of San Antonio giving Primo the ball and telling him, go get us a bucket. And while he tried admirably to fill a tall order, the rookie's inability to create separation with the clock winding down mostly resulted in less than ideal looks that brought down his summer league shooting percentages. Even on this sequence, with the exception of Justin Robinson, all of his teammates mostly stand around in one place as Primo dances with the ball before he's left with almost no option but to step into this contested three. Yes, Primo's ball handling wasn't the tightest and a lot of his dribble moves were ineffective, but perhaps his most tantalizing trait was his tough shot making despite creating little to no separation from defenders, and this fadeaway as he falls to the floor was nasty. And we saw Primo get off a ridiculously tough attempt that miraculously found the bottom of the net at least once a game during Summer League, including this one-legged turnaround jumper with the shot clock expiring that would have left Dirk Nowitzki's jaw on the floor. And it's the creativity, confidence, and audacity from the 18-year-old combo guard to try something like this in just his second professional game that sets his film apart from some of his peers. Primo's shot selection was mostly good throughout his first professional action, but the same attributes I listed a second ago also led to a couple of ill-advised heat checks like this head scratcher from right around the nail. As we all know, teenagers don't always make the best decisions, and Josh is no exception. Whereas Primo was the worst paint finisher out of all the 2021 first round draft picks who participated in Summer League, he was the fourth most efficient mid-range shooter out of that same subset of players according to Sports Info Solutions. And as we hit play, the flashes of advanced shot making are obvious as he hits Killian Tilly with a killer step back that splashes through the net. And this wasn't just a one-off attempt either. Josh Primo demonstrated supreme command of this move going in the opposite direction as well. As you'll see here in just a second, Primo has more than a few tricks in his bag. The rookie showed a penchant for stopping on a dime, spinning over his left shoulder, and draining some unreal contested fadeaway jumpers. This is the shot the young combo guard can get off pretty much whenever he wants. Watch as he forces his way downhill versus London Perantes, and let's freeze it. Josh Primo stands 6'5 with a 6'9 wingspan, making it nearly impossible for smaller players like Perantes to lay a finger on any of his shots. And at just 18 years old, there's a very real possibility he continues to grow over the next couple of seasons, which would only make him more of a matchup nightmare. But as we resume, Primo drains the fader, and this is the sort of creative freedom I hope Josh gets in Austin this season. All these glimpses of tough shot making are great, but it's also nice to know Primo can hit a more traditional mid-range jumper off the dribble, a skill he's far more likely to use on a regular basis. That about does it for this week's Josh Primo Film Study. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification button, and leave me a comment. What did you like? What didn't you like? But as always, thank you so much for tuning into these videos. I've had a ton of fun making them. I hope y'all have enjoyed them just as much as I have been putting them together for y'all. And we'll have another one next week. And until next time, Spurs fans, take care.